Hello there. Welcome to volume three of British Steel. This video is long overdue, so I'm excited to get into it finally. I've just been really busy. I've not got around to yeah doing what I've wanted to do. Not enough hours in a day. But anyway, we've made it. We're here. And today we're talking about a very, very underrated, overlooked, not well-known British classic. But here it is, folks. Underroll, misfortune comes by the means of the mouth. When this album came out, oh my God. Let's show you the uh, cover a bit closer there. So, following on really from the Stamping Ground video, of, uh, obviously I was getting into the hardcore scene at that time. Obviously Stamping Ground was a big one. There was Knuckle Dust, Unite, and um, there was loads of all dayers as well and um, I got friends with uh, two bands mainly uh, Set in Silence who Luke I do Maiden Cast with Doug was in and a band called 50 Calibre whose first EP ended up on Blackfish like Records um, Ian's record label so basically you go to these hardcore gigs they're all they're, generally they're all dayers they would always put on like these things with about 10 bands playing and you go to the merch stands and and yeah obviously anything with uh, Blackfish by Ian Glasper if any everyone was trying to get signed to that or trying to put something out on that label anyway so one day Luke comes to me I saw this being advertised in a couple of magazines and knew to look out for it and uh, Luke's band Set in Silence with 50 Calibre did a uh, gig supporting them I want to say it was the Red Eye. Don't hold me to that. It might have been the Red Eye, but I'm not sure. Anyway, he said, you got to listen to this band Underworld. They make stamping ground sound like sugar coma. <laughs> and uh, I mean, in all fairness though, at this point in time, you know, their man stamping ground, in a boxing match, whoever did win, it would have been on points. So I don't think it was a, uh, although, Stamping Ground had built up, you know, when Car from Empty Words come out, they'd had a couple of albums out by the time that dropped, and obviously they were they were touring full time and all the rest of it. But the potential was there; it really was. So anyway, I think I saw the I saw Underworld twice, and I got um, I think one was at the Underworld. I think that was at an Aldea. And I think the headline of that was when Unite and Knuckle Dust put out their Together We United We Stand, Divided We Brawl EP. And then I saw them again at the uh, downstairs at the Dome, and that was another all day. I can't remember what the event was, but I know the headliners were length of time. And both times they were fucking phenomenal, they were absolutely brilliant. And uh, I managed to get to speak to the vocalist, uh, Alan, a couple of times. And um, yeah, super, super nice bloke. Really nice, jingling, down-to-earth guy. Really enthusiastic as well about metal. And, um, you know, he was always saying, like, you know, how much talent was on display in this sort of little underground scene and how the labels just weren't picking it up, you know. But yeah, anyway, we'll get on to it. So first off, um, let's have a look in... I'll pick this up at the merch stand. So this is their first EP from 1999, and this is in the first instance. Now, this sounds like shit, it's got to be said, um, which is a shame because the songs are awesome. The riffs on it are fucking phenomenal. Great songs. Um, pretty much whatever you with Underroll, you, it weren't that different with Stamping Ground really in the case of it, the hardcore was kind of like the base for the sound and where Stamping Ground kind of took a fresh element and ran with that, these were borderline death metal. Some of the riffs were very, you know, shredding and melodic and you know, um, a song like, uh, we'll get to it in a minute, but like, never a true word spoken, you know, it's some of it weren't, wouldn't have been that 
out of place on like a Dismember album or something like that. But yeah, I don't know what the difference is because it's the same band line up, line up and, I, and both these albums are recorded by Dave Chang. So I don't know what the difference is. I mean, Al's vocals, it sounds like they're being recorded next door. It's all sort of, it's like he's got, like he's holding the mic and going, it's, you just can't make them out. Which is, yeah, but like I say, if the band ever got back together and did a new album, re record this EB is the bonus tracks because the songs are awesome. And uh, most notably, there's the uh, Never a True Word Spoken that gets re recorded for this album. And if you listen to both albums back to back, that just perfectly encapsulates the difference between these two. Because, again, Al's vocals come massively on this. And everything just sounds better. So, I don't know. They're both recorded by Dave Chang as well. So, I don't know. Did he get upgrade his studio? Did they have more time to record? I don't know what the difference was, but they step up big time for this release. Um... Yeah, the songs on this are just phenomenal. It's one of those albums that, if anything, it's got better. The more I got, the older I get, the more I love it. The uh, opening up, you've got like a like a sort of industrial, like it's all like machines going off, and um, in this little intro track, and then it kicks into dark, just that. And it's got this nice build-up build introduction. And then that... And then when Al's vocals kick in... Desolation! Bang! It, all chaos just kicks off. Um, really good opening track. Great little hook during the chorus. Which is searching for the light they call home. And yeah, it, it has that perfect sort of swing between fast and brutal shredding riffs to nice bouncy groovy parts that's just makes the crowds that you're playing live to move easily and um, when that finishes uh, self-destructing leadership I like the way the out that opening track is so heavy and then it opens nice and melodic on the second one so you kind of know we're going to go all over the shop on this one. It's got like this nice, um, just this nice little clean intro. And then just kicks in with, with this sort of chuggling, pummeling. And um, you've got a bit of a, not like a spoken word, but a bit of a, like a chant, like that sort of thing. Like, you know, what I said about what Madball do. You know, it's not quite rapping, but some nice little spoken word passages. All through the album, though, you've got the nice mixture of awesome riffs, real vicious sounding riffs, but then nice groovy sections as well. And it just, it's perfectly paced. And all the songs are pretty short as well. I think, I think the longest track is about five minutes, if that. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, just looking at, you got an average about three minute, three, four minute time length for a song. But yeah, We'll get into the middle of the album. Where this is the the crown of achievement, really. This is the uh, the with Dragon Spirit. This is the band's hello, be thy name. If the band went on to record other albums, if the band was still going today, that would be the track that they always finish with. You know, that's the one they have to play. That's their hit. And um, real, as much as this metal song, it's a beautiful song. If that makes sense, it's just it's got this. Um, Real positive lyrics as well. That's one thing about the lyrics as well. All the songs are, they, it's about finding your way in a chaotic world. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's it highlights a lot of bad things that are going on, but the sort of headspace for the lyrics is just trying to, just because, you know, the world is corrupt and everything else is going in a world of chaos. You've got to keep your head, you've got to keep focused, you've got to stay positive and just get through life, basically. And uh, yeah, so with Dragon Spirit, 
again, it had a great sort of bouncing sort of good groove. That dun 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 bam ba ba dun bam ba ba dun and then Al's vocals. What I say, hey people, our main stop. Ah then, and again, he's got this this his vocals fit perfectly with the music, and it's just got this great groove. And um, I think I don't know. I never heard this directly from the horse's mouth, but I think he'd studied some form of martial art and I think this song is about that so I don't know I know there's a lot of spirituality in um, certain martial arts and again I think it's like finding balance with the earth and but this song has this fantastic melodic part in the middle and you don't get that anywhere else on the album so with the rest of the album being heavy and brutal as fuck in the middle of this song it just breaks and then you got this clean and it goes into like this fantastic solo and it kind of goes like, it's kind of bluesy in a way but it's just in the middle of all this like destruction is this beautiful little part and it's just like this moment of little like this little bit of peace in the middle of a like, massive chaotic album but again, it just shows you what the band were capable of and what the potential would have held if they'd gone on to do other stuff. And um, yeah, he comes, he gives another spoken word passage where he says, "If this is be, a, is if this is to be my last appearance, then I'm truly honoured to have lived with the dragon spirit." And um, anyway, you've got this beautiful little section, and then it just kicks in again. And Al screams over the top of that, and it's just his voice was just scathing. It was awesome. Anyway, fantastic song, and anyone that knows Underworld today, that that's the song they're going to bring up. But then we go back into the uh, re-recorded version of Never a True Word Spoken, and that's just two minutes of rage. Awesome. One thing though, on this version, you had a little spoken word passage at the beginning. And uh, in this one, they just go straight into the song. But if you go on YouTube, it seems like someone's edited the two together, so it works. But yeah, fucking two minutes of just balls out. And then he's giving it lies, so bad, lies. And it just kicks in. And yeah, that's just, I mean, yeah, is it fresh or is it... Uh, to me, it, it sounds to me now like a death metal song. I mean, it's just as heavy as anything any death metal band's putting out, even today. And um, Gone But Not Forgotten, another great track. Um, I can't remember if it's Whisper Words of War or Pound of Flesh. One of them opens with this nice, dark, doo -doo 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 bass line. Really good. And... Uh, like I said with Stamping Ground as well, the whole album just has that sort of gr that British greyness of just, you know, always being overcast, always being raining. It's got that... It's the same with British death metal as well. Like, you know, bands like Benediction, the early Napalm Death albums, Carcass. They all have that British feel of just dull, grey, being in a city, really, just surrounded by glass and concrete and shit weather, you know. <laughs> But um, it captures it wonderfully. And yeah, Your Life for Our Angels just closes the album fantastically. You've just got 10, 10 perfectly paced, perfect set out songs. And it it just gets better with every passing year. It's age like wine. It really has. It's really fantastic album. And um, a crying shame the band never went on to do other things. Um, there's a film sample at the end of... Uh, your life for our angels and that track the band just basically just go for it and just throw everything at the wall it's fast it's groovy it just goes it's everything you want on the album and then it breaks down to like this uh, sort of wartime music uh, if this is a sample for a film and if anyone knows what this film is please let me know put a comment and let me know what it's from but um yeah it's like this i don't know who was that? Is it Glen Campbell? The Glen Campbell bag? You know, da, 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 that sort of wartime music. And then this guy just goes, I don't know who I am. And then 
I, some murder or some massacre goes carries out, and with this wartime music going in the feet, it's really disturbing and a real bleak way to finish the album. But uh, and then, so they put this out in 2000. Jesus Christ, this album's 20 years old. So, yeah, where has time gone? I remember buying this on a merch stand with this together, and then. Um, Around the same time, Unite and Knuckle Dust put out a split EP, which I mentioned earlier. Great EP, but yeah, it underall played that all day. Up. And for sale on the merch stand there was this compilation. Uh, Blackfish Production, UK, UK Hardcore, UK HC. You've got um, everyone on there, really. Unite, Incoherence, Decimate, that was another good band, we'll cover them at some point. Stamping Ground doing a Judge cover, Special Move, Knuckle Dust, Kanan, AKO doing a Gorilla Biscuits uh, cover. Above all, Divide, Raiden, that Raiden, they were fucking cool. I'll have to talk to you about them at some point. And yeah, 50 caliber, set against, free bass. But Underall did a track on this, a brand new track that wasn't on any of their albums, Reflection. And what's notable about that, it's a nice, fast, sort of bouncy song, lots going on. Lots of layered vocals as well, Owl's all over the thing. But what, what, um, one notable thing as well is that Owl does uh, clean vocals, which was another element added in, which was a nice little change. And again, it just sort of gives you an impression, oh, what would they have done? Like, you know, what would they have added if they'd carried on? Sorry, my throat's getting a bit. Um, yeah, so Christ, the potential was there. The band really could have um, gone somewhere, and they did do well for their time. They did, you know, a few good shows and a few bit, bit of touring and whatnot. But um, yeah, I'd love to get in touch with the band. I'd love to speak to any of them. But yeah, three great releases. Again, rough around the edges, but the songs are great. Absolute perfection on this and yeah if you can find this EP or go on YouTube and look at the track Reflection yeah really good song and gives you a just a little idea of what would have come if they'd uh, carried on so yeah this is uh, volume 3 of British Steel I've been getting really good feedback on the um, first two videos and loads of people are suggesting albums and different bands from the British scene and yeah don't worry guys I've taken note of all of them and they're all coming don't worry around the 2000s period a little bit before a little bit after the British metal scene had a really creative period and some great music came out and I'm going to be covering a lot well most of it all of it as much as I can as much as I can remember so um, yeah keep watching and they're coming so yeah that's the end of that one thanks for watching check out underall go and have a look at the uh, blackfish productions label there were some great releases on that and check out stamping ground obviously as well and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you all soon